36 now it's O'Connor and Company. And listen, if you've missed any of our program up until now, what are you doing, man? You should be subscribing and downloading our podcast. You can find it anywhere you like podcasts. Just search for O'Connor and Company and boom, we pop up right there. And then you won't miss a dang bit of this program. Coming up a little later at 8.05, Rob Whitman, Republican of Virginia, will talk about his vote last night, making history, impeaching a cabinet secretary only the second time in this United States of America. And then at 8.35, Alessandro DeSanto, he's a co-founder of Hallow. We'll talk about St. Valentine. We'll talk about Ash Wednesday. We'll talk about that great ad with Mark Wahlberg and Jonathan Romy and the incredible traffic Hallow's getting because people want to pray again. It's time to get your prayer left, and I, I completely endorse Hallow. It, it jump-started my prayer life. I'm Larry O'Connor alongside Julie Gunlock, who has also uh, jump-started my prayer life. <laughs> saint Julie yeah. is with us. She is You're a right. saint. I mean, she has to put up with that husband and those boys. Oh, Joining us right now is Tom Fitton. Uh, a happy, I guess we don't say happy Ash Wednesday. A uh, a contemplative Ash Wednesday to you, Tom, and a happy Valentine's Thank Day. You. you too, you too. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Julie. Listen, um, amazing timing for you at Judicial Watch, Tom, where on the same day we had this uh, finally successful vote to impeach Alejandro Mayorkas. You have uncovered some stunning information thanks to a Freedom of Information Act lawsuit that you put forth about Mayorkas and his involvement with the uh, Kennedy campaign. Yeah, it was a slow, modified, limited hangout of information from the Department of Homeland Security because we began investigating and we eventually sued for records about the decision to uh, not provide Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Secret Service protection. Uh, first, we found out there were threats. Obviously, that wasn't enough. Uh, then we found out that Mayorkas, as law rec- allows, has ultimate discretion, including President Biden, too. He also has discretion. And uh, confirmed, finally, thanks to our FOIA lawsuit, that Mayorkas personally rejected uh, the request uh, to provide him Secret Service protection. Mm. So my orcas did it, and you know the fact that Secret Service protection is even available to candidates is a result of Kennedy's father being murdered, and the idea that the Biden gang wouldn't give him the protection to me is dangerous and vindictive and the worst type of politics. Is that what do you expect will be the excuse from the department and my orcas? For this action. Oh, they have they have all you know, when you look at the internal process that they pretend to abide by, uh, which they largely redacted from us, they have all sorts of standards that the candidates allegedly have to meet in order to obtain Secret Service protection, including poll numbers and things like that. And of course, this isn't a presidential debate. This isn't a decision whether or not to allow them into a primary debate or such. This to me, you have to use your head. His last name is Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah. And let's just be sensible about it. He's obviously going to be a target simply in light of his last name and an elevated target. And why on earth would any presidential administration want to risk uh, his being assassinated because he has been threatened? Uh, what What is the harm in providing him the Secret Service protection? And I think we all know what the harm is. It elevates his candidacy in a way – that might harm Biden's tottering campaign. Yep, that's a hundred percent it. I again, none of no one here is suggesting that they want, God forbid, something to happen to Robert F. Kennedy Jr. But if there's a Secret Service detail, that immediately sends the message that it's a legitimate candidacy and that it it deserves attention. And that's the last thing they want. They didn't even want to legitimize him to stand on the stage and debate. For God's sake, he's a Democrat. He's a lifelong Democrat, and they've been trying to marginalize him. And, and, and no, Julie and I don't want him to be president. By the way, I just want to make sure everyone knows that we're not you know, endorsing Robert Kennedy. We're just pointing out exactly what's going on there. Um, Tom, while I've got you, because, listen, you and I had a conversation practically daily, certainly weekly, during the throes of the Russian collusion hoax back during the Trump administration. And the line had always been that the FBI was alerted by an Australian uh, intelligence agency that the— that um, that George Papadopoulos had been talking about and bragging about the Trump campaign having Hillary's emails through the Russians. 
I'd love for you to comment on the reporting from independent journalist Michael Schellenberger yesterday that now says, according to close sources that are close to the Intelligence Committee, that it was John Brennan's CIA, under the direction of Barack Obama, one must assume, who actually asked our allies in Australia and other agencies, the Five Eyes, to go out of their way and spy on 26 different members of the Trump campaign to bump them, to interact with them, and then report back to the CIA. This all began at the direction of John Brennan's CIA. Yeah, it would be no surprise to me if that turned out to be true. It would be consistent to what, with what happened. Let's just look what we know. Christopher Steele, who was the Clinton campaign vendor, was an F, was a British intelligence guy. Yeah. Are we expected to presume they had no idea what he was doing? I don't buy it. And, of course, given the role of, uh, as you highlight, the Australian government in this attempt to target Trump. Uh, plus, by the way, the Ukrainians were messing around, too, as you may recall, mm -hmm. from uh, uh, in 2016. So... The question is, who wasn't spying on Trump? And this is what I think is very interesting about this new argument that they've made up out of whole cloth, that we can now prosecute presidents for their official acts in, in office. A, it leads to, to me, the requirement that Barack Obama be criminally investigated directly for his role in this. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, John Brennan, we all know, and given everything else that's happened, they were all acting at the behest and direction of the Obama White House. So my view is, if Trump's going to be prosecuted, Obama must be prosecuted, certainly investigated for prosecution for, for these crimes against American citizens like Joe, like President Biden. That is a brilliant excuse me, observation. President Trump, excuse me. Yes, a brilliant observation, Tom Fitton. And uh, I, I didn't know where you were going to go with that, and I'm so glad I asked you about it because I know that you're one of the few people who followed that story so deeply. And it's still unfolding, by the way. And since they did that in 2016, Tom, and since they did the, the cover-up over the Hunter Biden laptop story before the 2020 election, I know that your eyes are wide open and you're watching to see what they're getting. Because they will try something. They will try something this election year, and the media will go right along with it because they're part of the scandal on a regular well, basis. Well, they're, they're trying to – the same agencies are trying to jail Trump now. Yeah. You know, it's never stopped. Never well, stop and it's why we need Judicial Watch. That's why we need Tom Fitton to be there uh, to continue to keep an eye on this stuff. Great, great reporting or great discovery, I should say, more accurately on this uh, Mayorkas and the Secret Service story with uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Continue the great work, please, Tom. You're welcome. Thank you. It is